had here and get that fired back up. I had to restart everything and it took forever for my uh, iPad to turn back on, which has nothing to do with being live. It's just, I think there's so much in it that it doesn't want to cooperate. All right. Can you hear me? So I can hear you, but I don't see it on the Belladonna page. Okay, let's see if it's gonna kick back on here. Um, I'm I'm trying to find it as well. It takes a second. Let me see. There it is. So I I called it uh, tie dye designs part two. All um, right. Um. Oh, and it's giving me an ad. That's weird. Okay. Skip the ad. Okay. Were you able to find it? Okay. Lila's back. Yay. Greg is back with us. Nancy. Okay. So Nancy said, I found you by going to your page on YouTube. There so did you find it? Margo I was going to say, yep. you can go into the live tab and I, I got every everything is plugged in. Um, I don't know why that happened. Uh, well, okay. Well, we're back and let, let's, Cross our fingers and hope that it doesn't happen again. That's a total bummer. Okay. Now, let's see. I can't. Okay, yeah. So I, I thought for a second maybe I had frozen up. Okay, I see you. Okay, so now back to what what we're doing. So I'm, I'm cutting this in half. This. Uh... Yes. So you're cutting, you're cutting it in half to make two pieces that are five and a half inches wide by 14 inches long. Okay. I'll just make sure I just made that first cut. I want to, yep. Okay. I got it. This is where having that tool that you have will come in really handy. Um, because these scissors are small in comparison to this cutting board, but it doesn't have to be like perfect. It's, this is just the ice barrier. So um, I mean, you know, try to do a good job, but you know, okay. And then now how, how did you fold it? What were the dimensions on the, the fold? Like, okay. So then, um, so my triangle measures five inches along the side. It's just over five inches. So I did my, uh, my measurement at five inches. Okay. Let me check. Let me check mine here. Yep, mine's measuring out to be exactly the same. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So right at that, uh, let's see, go to the edge. So at five inches, that's where I'm gonna make that bend. Where so did you did you already cut it into did you cut it in half lengthwise? Oh oh my video is really delayed. Like, yeah, it's about it's it's 20 seconds, it, typically 20 seconds delayed. No, no, my uh, my feed was like way way far back uh oh so, yeah it's like it's buffering or something oh no yeah it's really weird and then you guys remember if you want to if uh, so now that we're back and getting everything set up again don't forget to go up to the top it looks like a little gear click on the gear and then uh it'll say chat filter you want to set it to all messages, not top messages. Is it still telling you that it's buffering? Nope, I'm good. I'm 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 now caught okay. up. Oh, thank goodness. All right. Okay. <laughs> Technical difficulties are so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so all right. So at five inches, so I've got the two pieces. Okay, right? Yep. Okay. And then so at five inches, I make my bend. Yes. So I did five inches and in, in, at 10 inches. So at five inches and 10 inches, make that, there we go. Five inches and 10 inches. Okay, so on both pieces. Yeah. Now, um, and we're gonna put them together like we did on the last one, right? Yep, exactly. Okay, okay so I'm gonna get my ruler up in there and make that bend best I can. Is and anybody? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I just had to grab a pen. 
Now, uh, is anybody just now here for the very first time that has no idea what we're bending? Um, because um, well, I'm because this is going to take me a minute. Margo, do you want to? Would you? Could you? Just maybe, just quickly explain like what the heck I'm trying to build here. Oh, so this is um, this is the ice dam that's going to go around the. Uh, Shibori folded hand towels. So these are, are smaller than the bath towels we just did. And we're cutting it so it fits snugly around them. And then we're going to tape it so it's like really snug that tight. Like that. Yeah. And that's what I'm working on right now. So Margot, hers is already built. And, um, and she could probably uh, build these blindfolded <laughs> she's done them you know she's made them before so that's that's exactly what i'm doing these are uh cutting boards from the dollar store which is now in margo's neck of the wor world a dollar 99 store and mine is a dollar 25 store um for our ice barrier and i i I see great value in this um, because it's reusable. Whereas when we use cardboard or we use uh, foil, it ends up getting tossed out, which, you know, that's fine too. But I like to, anything that I can reuse, rinse and reuse, I'm all for it. So I'm almost done here. Boy, it's... When you when you have an idea of what the heck you're doing, it sure like this one's like so much easier than the last one. Yes, it's, it's making total sense. And this one, shiny side, matte side, doesn't matter. I have a better feeling about it, so does not matter which uh, which way which way's which. Okay, and so like Margot said, if you use Put that ruler down in there, help you bend that thing right on around it, and then get that first bend. And then I found if I just press it down and then take the flat side of the ruler and just sort of mash it down on there, rub it like this, it scores it up real nice and you get a good bend. Okay, now, uh, I don't have the flap on it like I did last time though. It just kind of is all coming together real nice. now. Well, the, the, the last third of it should actually be a little bit shorter. That's kind of the flat. Okay. Wow, I must have really measured wrong on this one because it is... Well, how did I manage to do that? Well, because, welcome to my brain. This is just how I operate. Like, they didn't... I did not bend those correctly at all. How? What did I do wrong on the second one here? So the first one... We said, what did we say? Five inches and then five inches. What did I do on this one? My goodness. Oh, I did five and a half. Well, that would explain my problem here. It matters though, right? So I wonder well, if I should okay. just chuck it. I, no, I can just bend it. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know what? You could just, you could take that flap, that little overlap flap, and once you bend it around and cinch it in, it's probably not going to matter that much. Yeah, I, I think I'll just kind of bend it backwards a little bit, get it all flattened out, like you said. And, and so do at five inches, not five and a half inches. That's I cut it at five and a half and then I measured it to bend it at five and a half. Try to pay attention to the instructions. <laughs> All right. Are you guys able to hear us better now? Because I feel like we're back on track. Margo, you're able to hear me the same? Like, Okay, good. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, so that, I don't know. It seems like around the two-hour mark, I've noticed in the past when working with Scott, like if things are going to go wrong, they seem to start going wrong, wrong after two hours. And I... I suspect it might have something to do with YouTube in the sense that like they don't necessarily want people just eight hours live 
I mean, not why would they care, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Okay. Now, so do I tape? Does it matter which side I'm taping together? Like that? I think it does, doesn't it? Well, you want to tape to the flap of one to the full length side of another. Okay. The flap of one to the full length side. Okay. So here's the full length side and then there's the flap and tape it in like in the corner part, right? Um, you know so what I mean? Want... So it'll yeah. bend to make it like that square. Yeah. Yeah, so you end up with a five inch section on that. Yes. Okay. Yes. There we go, okay. Now get a little piece of tape out here. Okay. Now, what colors are you doing on this one? Oh, I was going to do the same uh, to match the bigger towels. Oh. So I was going to make a whole coordinating set. Ooh, I see. Okay. My mind was not going there. I was thinking I was going to do, you know, like make make somebody a set of towels and make somebody a set of beach towels was where my brain was going. I mean, I guess I could just out of curiosity, just to see, you know, just to see what different colors will look like. Maybe I'll do that. What do you think? Like just choose, choose three other colors just out of curiosity to see. Sure. Since I've never done this before, just to kind of see. Yeah. yeah oh, that's fine. What did I do? That didn't work. All right. <sighs> Yeah, guys, yeah, guys, I see what I did wrong. <laughs> oh, no. I taped it so good it won't come apart. Oh, that, that, that second tape should come up. It should, it should come apart. Oh, no, it will. But you know what I mean? I just wanted to, like, peel it real easily. And it's like, nope, it's sticking. <laughs> but that's good. You want it to stick good. You don't want it to come apart while you're trying to do the dyeing process and have it fall apart on you. Okay, that's the short side to the long side. And then, okay, there we go. That's, I wanna tape it right there. I taped the two long sides together and that's not what you wanna do. Okay. You're being so patient with me. Thank you, Margo. Oh, you're welcome. I'm having so much fun. I hope you're having fun. I am. I, well, and it's exciting to see somebody else doing a thing that I kind of came up with. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's your thing. I mean, and totally. I think I think it's great. Okay, so yeah, nope, that's gonna be my yeah. square. Okay, now I got yep. my square. Now I'm gonna take the two side tassels down. Yep. And put the two. Does it matter? Which which side? I didn't think about it on the last one. I just kind of shoved two. It probably does matter, doesn't it? Like it, which, it's just a, it'll just make a difference in like where the the which color ends up where in the center. So it's yeah. entirely up to you. Like if you want to have like coordinated but not perfectly matching, they're not going to be perfectly matching anyway. Yeah, I didn't even consider that last time, and I just didn't pay attention at all. So they might be, like, so different. So what I'm looking at right now, so that first little bit that is, uh, you know, the first little half triangle. Um, I'm wondering, like, how, how do I position it so that, I guess, like, that maybe. Like, it's hard to see because I got the glare coming in from the window, but I've got the little half fold on the bottom. I don't know. So this will be a good learning experience for me for next time to see when I open them up, like, you know, which, which way to have, I guess what I'm going to try to do that little half triangle, I'm going to put it in the very center and have those two little half triangles butted up right next to each other. That's how I'm going to do this one and cool. see what happens. Okay, and now get myself a little piece of tape ready. I'm going to stick it to my table. That way I can fold this up around it and then do this one one handed. Yeah, this this ice barrier is brilliant. Good, good one on this one. 
because it does. It fits nice and tight. I have a uh, Venetian blinds, and I can only use them for spirals because, um, you know, they're not square. I wonder if I could mash those into shapes. Okay. Now I need a container. Hmm. Now, um, oh, I moved my thing. Okay, so you're going in the same type of container. I'm thinking I might go with a, I don't know if it'll fit, but I'm going to do one of these round bowls if it'll you fit. Know, I'm actually going to grab a smaller container that I have. Yeah, that one's too small. Um, let me see. Let me see. So what I'm trying to do right now, you guys, is trying to find a bowl that's kind of similar in size so that, yep, those bowls are the same, so that the project is sort of surrounded so all of the muck water isn't just totally going everywhere. But I don't know. I might not have a bowl big enough. I might have to just go with what I just used. Huh. All yeah, right. well, either too small or then there's this size. So I've got to stick in the same size. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with the same size too because I, I mean, I'm going to try one more time and see if I can put it in there. But it, then I'm really, I mean, I think I know because it, it, uh, it changes the, the shape of the ice barrier. So the goal is to keep the ice barrier tightly around. So like how Margo explained it on the last one, in case you're just now showing up, you want that ice barrier to stay tight around your project. So you you want the, the dye to, to go through the fabric and not down and around the fabric. And like she said, we're not trying to, we're not trying to necessarily muck dye the whole project, maybe just like a little bit of the bottom. Well, and right. you know, I think that this is actually okay being in a larger bin because if you look at the the stack, these are much shorter stacks. So a shallower muck bath is actually going to be better on these. So maybe even a larger size bowl would be better to help the the dye go away from the pro. You know, a little bit away, maybe. Yeah, that it, it because you're right. So let me see, like if. Ooh, how about one of the dish, the dish pan ones? Let's see what that looks like. Because that way, because right now with the amount of ice that I'm going to put in there, I predict it's almost going to con consume it and be as tall as the project is. But if I do a larger size like this, uh, the dish dishwashing pan or whatever from Dollar Store, it's going to see the, the bigger size, yeah. you guys. It's going to yeah. get that extra couple inches for the dye to go away from the project so less of it submerged. So I'm going to do that. I'm going with a larger um, a, 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 a container on this one. And always, you guys, make sure, and especially if you're getting them from the dollar store, check the bottom of your container for cracks. You do oh. not want to come back and find all of your muck water all over your floor and like your carpet or wherever that would be terrible. Okay. I'm really excited. I want to try different colors, different colors. What do you, what do you guys think? What do you think? I've got them all. What are some other fun colors that I never use? Well, um, somebody was talking about doing um, dances with raisins and peach. That would be something I would never think to put together ever. Um, I think I think that was Rebecca who said that. That I'm would be to fun. Um, One of my favorites to, to work with, I love uh, Dye Spin Teal Green and Dye Spin Cosmic. I don't have any of the Dye Spin dyes, unfortunately. It sounds beautiful. I like the names on those. Um, so what, 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 Peach? Does Peach split? I don't remember. Um, uh, my my peach has never split. Yeah, I want a splitting color. Like, um, I just did one of those. What did I use? It was so. Do you fun. have mousse? 
I do have moose. I've got moose. I've got um, moose, bracken. Bracken's kind of fun. It's like purple and pea green. I've got moose. I've got bracken. I've got all the zombie colors. Um, hi, hen sweeties. Uh, I've got uh, black cherry. Oh, I love black cherry. Yeah, I've got black cherry and I've got, you know, I've got the grays, like, what, is it Timberwolf or Brush Steel? Um, those, that, those are pretty splits, but it's not a heavy dyer, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a good saturator for me anyways. Yeah. Um, I've gotten, I've gotten nice things from black cherry on Shibori. Let me see. I'm trying to find, there it is. I see it. Instead of doing Dances with Raisins, how about I do Black Cherry? Because um, I like Dances with Raisins, but I don't feel like it's as split-like as uh, Black Cherry. Or maybe, yes. I mean, maybe it is, but I feel like Black Cherry is a little... Oh, another one I really like is Eggplant. I think Eggplant is a pretty mm -hmm. color. So Dharma Eggplant or Pro Chemical Eggplant? I only have um, Dharma. I have... Is is Pro Chem's pretty? I love Pro Chem eggplant. Theirs is the eggplant from Pro Chemical is more purpley. Um, the Dharma one is a little more brown. Um, yeah, I, I haven't tried it from them. I'm eventually going to end up with all of their colors because I'm obsessed with collecting and hoarding dyes. Uh, As you, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I want them all. I know. Um, I, I really do. I love it. So what did we, we did purples and pinks and greens on this one. I'm, have you ever made, I'm sure that you have like some that are kind of like orange, like, you know, uh, like Mars dust or, you know, I don't, I have all these colors I've never even opened that like, so um, plum, color. do you have plum port? Cause plum port and Mars dust are fun together. Oh, I like that. I do. I, I have a shirt that I did those on. Uh, yeah, because I like that's what I'm saying. Like a like a purple and an orange, like just totally outrageous across the color wheel, or like blue and orange. So yeah, I've got blunt plum port. That's kind of dark, like plum cherry. Different, but dark. Okay, so plum port. Um, and then yeah, like an like an orange. Like Mars does. I've got them all. Uh, and Rust Orange would be a good one, too. I've always wanted to do these melon colors. Do any of the melon colors split? Like, uh, uh, I don't think I with those much. Yeah, I I can't. I need. I really need to get into to swatching them all out because I've got all. Like, I don't know what. There's one that's like Flamingo, Hot Flamingo or something. I don't know. Um, what oh, yeah, Flamingo Flame is kind of pink. And yeah. then there's Flamingo Fantasy that's more like a flamingo orange. It doesn't split a lot, though. Yeah. I think Mars Dust is going to give you more split. We want the splits. Mars Dust, there it is. All right. Tangerine splits a lot. Oh, like regular dye. Yeah, it is. It's like yellow and orange. Mars Dust has more complexity, though. Okay, I want to go with the complexity. So I've got Mars Dust Plum Port. Do you think those two will be enough, or should I throw a third one in there? You can I'm all about it. I'm all about yeah, it. You know what? Why don't you throw in, like, something more purpley? Why don't you throw eggplant in there? Okay, let me see. Um, eggplant. There it is. All right. Eggplant, Mars Dust, and Plum Port. That sounds fun. Okay. So now when adding them, so I, we make those triangles again. But I guess first we're going to put down a uh, paper towel. Oh, that's right. Paper towel. Paper towel. Okay. So the paper towel gets cut a bit larger than the outside of the barrier. Okay. Well, I just tore that one. I'll use that one for my spoons. Um, okay, so I'm just holding it up on top of my barrier and just sort of cutting around it. Like, yep. eyeball, I'm just eyeballing it. Doesn't have to be perfect because, um, like we did on the last one, I'm going to mash it down on and around there. 
Um, now, for die placement, I guess it doesn't really matter because they're all going to kind of meet. I'm just, you know, I've got the, you know, the triangles and I want to, I want it to, you know, I don't, I want them all to be separate. Do you think it matters like which color I start with? Well, if you want them to all be separate, you could always leave a narrow gap in between them to let them kind of like bleed towards each other. Ooh, that's, that's a good idea. I didn't think about that on the last one. I just kind of put a lot on there. Like, you know, mashed them all together. Um, so let me, I'm trying to think about this. So if I do this triangle, Mars dust, and then I do purple here. Have you ever done, I'm sure you have, but like do like two triangles, one color, and then like plum port here and eggplant there type of a thing? Yes. I wonder what that would look like because not that plum port and eggplant are the same, but they're, you know, they're in that purplish range. They're, they're not very, you know, you know what I mean? They're in the same ballpark. Yes. Color wheel wise. Um, okay. So, okay. I've got my paper towel down in there. I'm going to get now you guys, if you're new to tie dyeing, I personally like to use a new spoon for each jar of dye. I don't like to cross contaminate. Um, do you do that too? Do you use a, a different spoon for each jar, Margo? If, if they are in, uh, if they're like in close proximity to each other, I don't. Okay. But like, like this one, I, I'm going to use a fresh spoon in this one because this one is only blue pigments. So, like, it has nothing other than blues in it. Okay. I, yeah. I mixed this one myself. It's, uh, oh, it's that, yeah, it's my own blend. Well, I'm excited to see that. Ooh, just, sal salmon mousse. Sorry, I, I'm not to cut oh, you off, but I just looked mousse. across the table and salmon mousse is sitting there. Um, oh, salmon, salmon mousse instead. Yes. Well, not instead, but also. Um, so you mixed your own dye. Have you have you showcased this before? I'm not sure if I've ever seen it. Yes, I've been doing some gravity dyes with it. Um, there's a I've been doing tunics that are gravity dyes because I was curious to see how the different blue pigments traveled and which ones traveled furthest. So like uh, cobalt, nebula, navy, they don't travel as far as turquoise, and Houdini blue is kind of like a mid range in in there so i was just kind of curious to see how they all split out and so you and have that, that that's all you have all of that inside one like all mixed up in one jar that's yeah. that's really see i have not um experimented with any of that um i'm you know i'm still new enough to where you know, I've, I've got, I haven't even opened so many of my uh, jars of dye yet that I, you know, I don't even know what one color is capable of, let alone mix them all together, you know. <clears throat> but I could see that would be pretty fun to come up with your own dye. Well, uh, there's a, a Facebook group, Procyon Dye Blenders, and it's dedicated to people who want to try to either create dyes or recreate dyes. But we, we have dye challenges, experiments. I wonder if I'm part of, like, if I, I don't go into it, it you know, I, not something that I go into, but I wonder if I am a member of that group. I feel like you I've been, seen some, some type of a mixing group because I was looking to see, like, color combination. I was looking for that, and I think I stumbled upon, like, if you put this color and that color, this is what color you're going to get. But I, I didn't spend a lot of time in there. But it's very fascinating, uh, you know, the idea of coming up with your own. I would love a Belladonna, a Belladonna color. And oh. I think for me, because I'm obsessed with purple and green, um, I make a lot of purple and green stuff. You know, something that that would just do that on its own would be tons of fun or you know like a magenta and a purple and a kind of like spicy plum <laughs> have you ever used dusty purple from pro chemical um i do have dusty purple yeah um that's purple green split 
It is purple and green. Mine, uh, it mine also has like some hot pink and then gray. I don't know if yours does that, but like at the very, at the very, very, uh, like you know, in the quiet areas, it has a, like a really like pretty light gray color. You know, I don't know, in the sense that you know each each lot of dye is different so you know mine could be so different from yours type of a thing um i like dusty purple but i i really love spicy plum so much more i like those really vibrant colors i'm a rainbow kind of tie dyer like i love rainbows Just i very rarely use any of the the browns and tans I have them, but I just don't use them very often. I really don't either. And I've been I've been trying to broaden my horizons a little bit. And uh, that last glitch shirt that I made, I used colors that I like hardly ever use. I don't even remember now what I used. It was like uh, terracotta and camel or, you know, something like that. Chamois. It was chamois. Or something like that. And it was beautiful. I need I need to give more credit to those um, earthy type tones. Okay. That was... Okay, so I just did Mars Dust. And then right there was Plum Port. And Plum Port dye. This is where it's fun with dyes. It looks red. But it, it really, it breaks down into a pretty... Like a... Well, port is wine, right? So it, it breaks yeah. down into a real pretty purplish wine type color. And, and then, then it has like a little orange split on the edges. I've only used it one time that I can recall on a, on a tank top dress. And I had so many other colors going on. You know, when it's your first time using a color, you don't really know what it's doing if you're adding a whole bunch of colors with it. I'm going to go grab my ice. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. So, yeah, for this one, I'm almost, part of me is like feeling like, should I wonder, should I do? So I did that triangle there with the plum port and then over here with the Mars dust. And then I'm wondering if I should just do another triangle of Mars dust. I just don't even know, you guys. Got to find something for that corner, though. Like... I don't know. Maybe I'll just do that. Or, ooh, ooh, I wonder, I'll wait for Margo to come back and ask her what she thinks. But, <clears throat> like, I've got all these uh, that I just got. Well, didn't just get, but I've got um, with blue, blue, purple, brown. I don't know. Otter brown. Madrone. Yellow. Wood turquoise. I wonder if like a turquoise would look cool in there. Mm, what? I don't remember. What was Loden? Loden was like a... I can't hear you again. Oh, I've got my mask on and I wasn't, I was, oh. I had my head underneath the table. Oh, um, okay. I just wanted to make sure the phone hadn't frozen again. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't frozen. What do you think since I did like, kind of like two darks and then sort of like an, like Mars dust, like an orangey, would it be like too extreme? Like if I did something that had like a turquoise in it or something, would that be? Oh, that would be really cool. You think it would? I wonder. Yeah. I don't know. I, the only thing with the blues and the turquoise is I don't, I don't, they don't really split a whole heck of a lot. So I don't even know. Right. Um, I, I, don't, I don't like straight turquoise, but uh, what would be nice? Um, like I've got, I've got bell bottom blues. I've got mom jeans. I don't ever use those. They're both know. really nice. Mom jeans even has a little splash of purple in it. Maybe I'll try that because I I can't recall ever using it. 
let's see if I can find it. Uh, hi, honeys. Um, sorry, guys. I know you hate it when I take forever trying to find my dye. I just wasn't. Uh, come on, my jeans. Where are you? Bell bottom blues, mom jeans. Well, if you have bell bottom blues, you could go ahead and grab that. Yeah, I, I, well, I do. I see that. I've got blue, blue, kachu, which I don't, blue, blue, kachu. I don't know anything about that. Um, that that's similar to bell bottom blues. Bell bottom blues is going to be a little bit more purpley, I think. Yeah, that's what we want. Well, somebody recommended Mermaid's Dream. Moon Dye said Mermaid's Dream. That's a great color. That is a great color. Where did it go? Oh, maybe I don't have... Maybe I don't have mom jeans. I mean, I'm sure that I... Is mom jeans a regular dye or was no. that one of the muck dyes? That was one of the... No, it was one of the special order dyes. Okay, so I'm not looking in the right... The, there it is. See, I have to know what I'm looking for. I got mom jeans. There's mom jeans. Found it. Okay. So I'll I'm going to put my ice back in the freezer. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to do this this final um, final triangle here with the mom jeans. And this should be interesting. I'm super curious to see, you know, that's the fun of playing in the colors. I, I like to have fun and just kind of mix it up a little bit. And Margo knows this pattern, so I like the idea because she kind of has an idea. Because I would go outrageous. So I would pick things that probably would look terrible. Oh, you know what? Like like we did on the last one, you got to remember to put the dye on thick. See, I've been, I haven't been doing that. I've been just sort of covering it and being sparing with it. No, you got to put it on there thick. Got to remember, you got to get all those layers you got to get through. This one has a lot fewer layers, though. True. Good point. Maybe I put a little too much on there. I'll take just a tad bit back, but because I don't want, I, if I can help it, I don't want to have to uh, like reapply dye or, you know, if I can help it, I don't necessarily want to have to flush it. I like, I'm one of those dyers that if I can, I like to just set it and forget it if possible. I'm putting some soda ash on for good measure. Okay, well then I'll do that too. We didn't do that on the last one, and that's fine. I, I just did. I just did that on my bigger one too. Oh, you did put it on your last one? I just did now, yes. Oh, just did. Okay, well, when we hang up, mine's already in the house, and once it's in the house, I have to take the soda ash to it. I do not like to walk around with my projects, because if I trip and fall and spill dye, I'd be devastated. Okay, and that I think that looks pretty good. I think plum port being a dark color, I think it'll saturate pretty well. Okay. Okay, and then always you guys remember to um put put the right lid back on your project. There's nothing worse than just going off the top of your lid and then finding out you put it on the wrong jar of dye after you've already started sprinkling it everywhere. Okay. All right, quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. All right. Yep, Margo's looks good. So we're getting close to wrapping up, you guys. Thank you so much for being here, Margo. Are you back or are you in the freezer? Oh, oh there you are. Yeah, I was just sitting here. I, I, I pulled the chair up. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go grab my eyes. Why don't you take a minute to, uh, you know, tell everybody about, like, you, where they can find you, if they want to purchase your beautiful work, if you've got some you want, want to display. You know, let everybody know how they can find you. Okay, thank you. Um, so my website is margosdyes.com. It's, uh, oh, let me grab a card. Uh, oh, I have a card on the table, buried on the table. Let me grab a card. Whoops, I 
to spill ice everywhere. Here we go. So, uh, here. Sorry, I had to grab a card so it's you can see that is that glare margosdies.com and um you can purchase right on the website and i have an instagram and i think it's under margos dies but i don't do a lot there i post most of my things to my facebook my personal page i don't really have an active facebook page either but i post in the different groups like the belladonna sales group um what else to say uh <laughs> no i mean that's no that's good you know your your business name your uh the groups that you're in uh instagram you know stuff like that just uh margo farnsworth i i will link uh her well if she wants me to i will put her facebook link down below because you you i mean i'm assuming you sell your stuff right you don't just give it away Right. I do sell my stuff through, I have a website, margosdies.com. Okay. And so, I, I just sell directly through that. I, I don't have a business Facebook page. I just post stuff to my personal page. Because I found the Facebook interface to try to do any sales through my Facebook page was really challenging to set up. I agree. I, I, I totally agree with you. So I will... On, on both part one and part two, I will link Margot's. Uh, do you use Shopify or Etsy or? Uh, I use the, it's called IndieMade.com. Oh. And I, their rates are better than um, Shopify or what was the other one? Well, at, Etsy, their rates have gotten crazy, but I love IndieMade.com. It's been great. It costs me like $12.99 per month. And um, then I bought my own URL and I just have it redirect to my Indie, Indie Made page. And I can have an unlimited number of items on there. And it's hooked to my PayPal account. And it's been really simple to manage. See, I, uh, you know, I'm asking because I, I don't sell a lot of my stuff yet. Um, I don't, I just feel like I don't have time to figure all that out. So I ask because I need, I need to create a website and, you know, have a, a place. And so, um, I, you know, I need to do that. So I'm just always kind of curious to hear what people are using. Uh, I asked this question a while ago when I was talking about Etsy and everybody was like, no, you know, like just, if you're going to do it, get yourself a, like a website, like, I have an Etsy, but there's hardly anything on it. So, um, so that's good to know. I'm going to, I'm taking all of this in as I, you know, consider making a website. I'm scared because it's like, once I do it, then like, it's for real, you know, I got to like keep up with it and <laughs> it, I'm nervous about it. So, but, so I will, I will put a link to Margo's website down below in the description box. So you guys can check it out later this evening um so you guys can find her so well i want to say thank you very much margo this has been really fun um i've been wanting to do this for some time i i, I feel like i've been pestering you for a while so i finally <laughs> wore you down and, well, thanks for having me <laughs> and i really appreciate your patience you're an excellent teacher um did you talk about your youtube channel uh, well, there's only a couple of videos up there and it's, it's still under my husband's YouTube channel. I need to fix that. Okay. <laughs> well, it's my husband's channel that has medieval fighting on it. So it's kind of funny. It's medieval fighting and tie dye. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did notice that. So, um, I will also link Margo's, uh, channel down there, but it's, uh, it's Margo Farnsworth. So uh, at least, right. That's just type in Margot Farnsworth. You guys, uh, when we leave out of here, go over to her YouTube and subscribe to her channel. It's okay that you have medieval fighting stuff on there. Lots of pages start out as one thing or channels and they turn into something else. So, you know, as you add to it, but make sure you subscribe and then don't forget to give thumbs up, 
thumbs up on this one as well. Subscribe. Turn your bell to all. So when you're over on Margot's channel, do the same thing. Turn on your bell. So, because she doesn't upload a lot, but when she does, you're not going to miss the tutorial that she's sharing. So don't forget, head over there. I'll link it all down below. I want to say thank you to all of you for tuning in and being with us today. This was a lot of fun. Um, keep in mind, I'm thinking about moving everything over to Saturdays every other Saturday at noon, but I will make an official post when I decide exactly what we're doing. See, and I'm talking with my hands a lot right now. Um, <laughs> Um, so again, thank you very much. And for those of you that gave the generous donation to the channel, I, I greatly appreciate it. And, you know, for the rest of you, you know, I know that it's, it's expensive. So what you can do to really support the channel is just make sure that you are subscribed because that helps out tremendously. And the whole point of all of this is to teach people how to tie dye. And the more people that interact, you leave a thumbs up, uh, you subscribe. It tells YouTube that the channel is good. And then when new tires start to, you know, look for content, they will find the channel and they can learn too. So that's, that's the whole purpose of all of this stuff. So from here, uh, Margo, why don't tell, tell us how you do your batching and then we'll let everybody go. Like what, I mean, from how long do you batch? What temperature, stuff like that? So I usually, um, once the ice melts, um, I do that hot glob or salt irrigation. And then um, I, I try to let them sit for a day or two. Sometimes I've got this, um, it's a dehydrator that lets me crank it up to 156. So sometimes I'll just set that bin right on the dehydrator with a, a top over it and let it batch on that for a few hours with some extra heat. Especially when there's muck water like that, it like really helps set those blues and um yeah that that's kind of it and then i i wash out i use synthropol um and i usually especially with with blues i'll do like several hot water soaks like you know three or four hot water soaks to really get that blue rinsing out of there yeah because the, bl the blues are a challenge they just do not want to let go during the rinse out they it it takes forever to get the blues out. I'm you know, the the unbonded blues, you know. So 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 I mean it sounds like the same, 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. Um I try to go for 48 hours, but I also kind of lazy when it comes to the rinse out process. I mean, I'm really excited to see these, but at the same time, I don't enjoy the washout process. I find it rather laborious. So it's kind of like, oh, you know, like I'm not like, oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to like wash and iron and you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't enjoy that part so much. So, um, so yeah, so I'm at, I'm at 24 to 48 hours, usually 48 hours for the batch time. So sounds like we're about the same thing. I use Kirilon because I can't find Synthropol on, from Dharma anymore, but they assured me that Kirilon and Synthropol were the same thing, essentially. So they just got Synthropol back. Oh, they did. Okay. They did. It was like a month or so ago, they started getting some Synthropol again. I did not know that. Well, I have a whole gallon of Carillon and it lasts me. A, a gallon of Carillon lasts me all year long because it doesn't take a whole lot, you know, a little, little splash in there and I'm good. So a gallon will last me for forever. So, but that, that's good to know. And I heard that there's a new gray available on Dharma's website. And last night I was trying to look for it and it told me that their license or something has expired and that possibly this website is uh trying for fraud i mean i don't know what the words were so i i waited and i haven't gone back on there today like it expired that afternoon so hopefully yeah. they'll get their website back up and running i mean i know that they're not creating fraud but you know what i mean i didn't really want to click on it just in case there was something yes. weird going on but i heard there's a new gray for this season uh, on Dharma. Have you seen it yet? I don't know anything about it. 
So it's um, it's like a really dark neutral gray. So it's a non-splitting gray. Oh, well, that's no fun. <laughs> but it's it's a it's a very deep gray. So it's like you know how neutral gray doesn't split. This is just it's like that, but just darker. So probably wonderful for liquid dyeing, but for the ice dyeing, like we all are looking for those fun splits. Um, and you know some colors that don't split are also wonderful for ice dyeing, but. I typically like to enjoy to see all the random colors because it just makes it a lot more fun. So, Thank you. so yes. I'll I'll have to check it out once once it's up. Oh, okay, Heather. So Heather says it's back up. So that's great. Great, great, great. Okay. Well, wonderful, wonderful. So um, okay. Oh, and one more thing I forgot. We should have been talking about this when I was struggling. You um I would like for you to go live again with me. I hope that you had fun and would like to do it again. And yes. you were talking about doing the, um, the freaky Farnsworth. Um, just real quick. Can you, you know, kind of say like what, what we should anticipate, like what supplies we'll need to do for that fold. Um, so we were talking about doing a long sleeve t-shirt because a lot of people have been asking about how to fold that in particular. Um, so we'll need, uh, Sodash t-shirt, rubber bands, um, and then, oh, let me grab the syringe to show you. Oh, yes, um, yeah, yes. So uh, this was really good because we were talking about doing it without having the supplies. And this way we can see the supplies that Margo uses and plan ahead and we'll have enough time to get them here for the next live. So, so it's, um. The Cardinal Health Piston Irrigation uh, Syringe. I found out about these from David Coleman at Goatee Creations. And so um, he does, he uses these, he does amazing precision um, dye application, but um, it's got a nice wide tip on it. And I mix my dye with soda ash. So you can use this for hot water irrigation, but um, I'll either add soda ash or some dyer salt to help it flow and to like break up the clumps. And this lets me lay down some very specific lines of dye because with the Freaky Farnsworth fold, um, you fold it and then you lay down the thin lines of dye with white space in between them. And then you put it on an incline. So we'll need an incline setup for that. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, well, we were talking, uh, you know, messaging. So I, I have these little four ounce bottles and I'll just show you, I had to cut the tip of it because it's real small. I don't know if you're, if it, if it shows, well, there's that 20 second delay. I use these for precision work. I'm wondering, I'm just, I'm curious if, so that I don't necessarily, because I already have these, so I don't have to buy syringes. I mean, I will, of course, but um, I guess you can't really see. I think uh, you'll be fine with those. So wait right here, I'm just going to move this aside and I'm just going to do, a, I'm going to do a line on the tape. Well, the, well, it comes out really quick, but I, I'm able to do a nice straight line and I have this mixed with soda ash. I mean, that first bit came out pretty crazy because of the gravity but um oh, that's good yeah so i mean are you get i mean it might be a little wider but like i said i cut the tip on this particular bottle already but i have ones that i haven't cut um so you think something as long as we're able to do a nice straight line you you know because i know a lot of my viewers do have these already Yes. from from past experiences where I was doing hot water irrigation. And, okay. you know, some people can lay down a good line with just a spoon, like Scott Walker. Yeah, that's that's very true. <laughs> uh, I, I do not. <laughs> or at least I'm not very good at it. Okay. So, I mean, that that's, that is very true. So, I've, I guess if you've got a very steady hand and you can trust yourself, a spoon will work. Um you, Margo's syringe method and I'll get the links and get all that um, going. Uh, it sounds like if you already have these little bottles, I know a lot of you do, these might possibly work. I mean, all, all things to think about. Um, I wonder if I just threw this down here. What color was that? 
That was Raven Black. It'll probably mess everything up. I'll just throw this. I can put it back in the bottle. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to throw it away. Um, and also, how how do you get that in those syringes with a a funnel? Um, I actually have. Um, let me grab it to show you. Uh, so the one thing I like about this uh, bottle is it's got that nice wide mouth. So. I use, it is a table scraper. I had originally bought these to lay down dye and these are nice for laying down dye, um, but I can just, I can fill it up and then I can just put it right inside the top of the syringe and pour it in. So it's a pretty nifty tool. And I bought these early on and I still like them a lot. Is that what at a fancy restaurant, they come by yeah. and clean your, your the little uh, crumb scrapers? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I I never knew they had a name or what they were. All right. But yeah, no, I mean, I could see it. It's got a nice like little trowel shape. You can just fit it right on in there. And yeah, lots, lots of good information on these lives, you guys. Like I would have never considered uh, to use something like that as a tie-dye tool. But, you know, uh, that's why I call us and we're McDivers, right? We, we it out. yeah, I love it. Okay. So we'll need a long sleeve t shirt. Well, a long sleeve shirt if, if you want to, but could it also be done with a short sleeve shirt if they don't want to do long sleeve? Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It could be a neck, a v neck, whatever you like. Okay. All right. We'll do that. And um, so we're thinking about precision lines um soda ash soap the usual supplies now will this be done with sinew rubber bands uh i do rubber bands okay rubber bands so basically the same same supplies and the only thing different would be the syringe if if you don't feel confident doing it with a spoon um and, way to incline. and it'll be incline on a rack incline on a rack yep which most of us most of us have that, um, I think. I, I mean, most of my projects are incline ice dye, so I think a lot of us have that already. So I'm super excited about it. So, I mean, we'll talk about it. Um, you're, you're, it's, it's up to your schedule, you know, as well. Like, I don't know if you're available next Tuesday or if Saturdays would be better, you know, that type of a thing. But again, you guys, I will, I will nail it down. We'll decide when I'll make a post like I did today. Um, let, letting everybody know when we're going to do it. I won't, I won't just spring it on you like I have in the past. And then, um, I'm going to put all the information in the description box about everything we talked about for this project today. For those of you that need to go back and like rewatch it or, you know, whatever it, the information will be down in there. So. Uh, yeah. Lila, yes. Lila says, McDivers unite. That's right. <laughs> Wonder twins. That's right. All right, you guys, we've been on here for a long time. I've, I've really, I've kept Margo a lot longer than I was like, yeah, we'll just do this in an hour. And here we are <laughs> several hours later. So again, Margo, thank you so very much. This has been a, just a big wealth of knowledge. I'm excited to do more of these. Um, and for all of you that, you know, stayed with us for all of this time and tune in on, you know, every live we do, it's, it's, uh, I just have so much fun and I could talk about tie dye till tomorrow. Like I just, I could talk about it all night long. I love it so much. So <laughs> you know, me too. <laughs> all right, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you again, thank you. Margo. And, and we'll chat. You send me the links, you know, go have your dinner, do whatever. It's no rush, but get back with me with the links and all of that. And then, um, and then we'll, we'll talk about wh what we want to do in the future. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you guys. Thank you, everybody. Take good, good care. Night. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye.